guys, it's Jamie with Not Too Shabby, and I'm so glad you could join me today. Today we are kicking off our countdown to release day with a reveal. So I'm going to reveal a stamp that's going to be in your September box. The September box is called Autumn Vibes, and I just love it, guys. I just can't wait to show you tomorrow's peak of the paper and the ephemera. So this beautiful stamp here is called Autumn is Calling and we've got a lot of fall icons in the stamp set. So we have a pair of pumpkins, an acorn, we've got some greenery, a fall leaf, we've got a candle that probably smells delicious, we've got a mushroom, we've got a slice of wood, we have a scarf, mittens, we have an envelope tied with some fall greenery, we have a latte, could be a pumpkin spice latte, and the sentiment that says, but I think I love fall most of all. So really, really cute. We're going to stamp this out and color it up. We'll probably put the cards together tomorrow. I might pair it up with the paper and the ephemera. So let's just color up the stamp for today. The release for the box of September will be on September 1st at 9 a.m. Central Time. So when you get a new stamp, I like to wipe it down with my stamp chamois to get the manufacturer's oils off of there. Um, otherwise, your ink might not stick to it as well as you would like. Um, you could also take a pink eraser and just erase the top to get that um, oil to get the oils off or take your finger and rub on it. So what I'm going to do is put in as many images on this as I can. So I'm using the mini misty. So if you have the large Misty, you can probably fit everything on here. And I might be able to do that with this small Misty if I lay out all my images um, perfectly. I want to keep a little space around it because I'm going to run this through my brother Scan and Cut to cut all these images out. Of course, you can fussy cut them with scissors, but since I have the brother um, Scan and Cut, why not? Why not make it easier for me? I really love this pair of pumpkins here. You know what, I think I'm gonna make a card today um, without the paper because I'm just dying to make a card with the stamp set. <laughs> so I'm sure I'll have images left over to make a card tomorrow using some of these images, but yeah, I have to make a card today. Okay, and I'll probably stamp out some more acorns in maybe some greenery, something that'll fit in these empty spots. And I'm going to bring out my metal mat. My table is a little uneven. I have two um, desks put together, so there is a little crease in the middle. And I like to use the mat because if you have an uneven surface, then sometimes when you're stamping, um, that gets in the way. So I like to stamp on top of this mat. And I am going to use Memento Tuxedo Black ink because I plan on using my Copic markers. And this handy little um, tool, um, sometimes I get people asking me what this is. Um, this is a little tool that uh, Miranda from Multiplicity Crafts um, invented. And you can find this in her Etsy store if you look up Multiplicity Crafts. Um, I can't stamp without it. I just love it. It prevents you from getting the inky fingers. And um, I like it because I'm not down here stamping. I'm up higher stamping. And it's just attached to your ink with Velcro. And I'm going to stamp it like three times since these are brand new stamps. And I could tell that the... The ring, I should um, wipe that more with my finger. It doesn't want to, um, the ink doesn't want to stick to it um, that well. It's, it's pooling up. So after a few stampings, um, you'll see a, 
a big difference. See, you can see that now the ink is starting to stick to, to that ring. Sometimes you need to um, stamp your stamps a few times to get them conditioned. Okay, that looks good. So now for the uh, empty spots, I think I want to do some more acorns. Okay, I grabbed a bunch of colors. I don't know where I'm going yet with the coloring, but I grabbed a set of greens, oranges, I have reds, I have browns, and I have like teal. And I just picked out some colors, kind of matching the paper for tomorrow, um, just a little bit. So I want to paint these pumpkins orange. So I'm going to start with YR sixty eight. So I'm just following the artist drawn lines here. And I've got um let's see, I don't really have like a blending combo for orange, but I have YR04, YR18. I think the YR18 is going to be a little bit darker than this orange, so I might want to go over what I did a little bit to have some darker area. Yes, this is definitely darker than the orange color, so I'm just going to Darken up those lines. And then I have a YR04. This one's going to be lighter. So brighten up these pumpkins a little bit. And I'll, I'll see what else I have. I might have something um, even lighter than this that we can use so when I'm doing these um, sneak peeks do you guys enjoy the live um, coloring or would you rather have a fast forward version or do you like it when I combine both um, sometimes I do that because I just can't talk the whole time. <laughs> so I just fast forward and speed it up a little bit. I have a Y17, which is a golden yellow. Um, that might be really pretty. So I'm gonna um, finish up the pumpkin with this color. And then we're gonna go over everything that we did. So this is the before, the second layer. So this time we're going to start with the YR18 since we found out this is the darkest color. And I'm just going to go in where I want my most darkest shades to be. And then I'm going to go in with the YR68. And now the YR4, the YR04, we're going to go ahead and blend some of this out. And then for the lightest color, we'll use that Y17. This kind of gives the pumpkins a glow. And then we'll really, really just blend out all the colors. Okay, I think that looks great. I did get out of the line just a little bit, so I'm going to take my zero blender and just push the color back down into the cardstock. And if you ever can't 
fix that, just take a white Jelly Roll pen and just cover it up with that. I've done that before. So for the stem, we could either do a green stem or a brown stem. I think both would look good. So I think I'm gonna do a dark green. So I'm gonna do that G99. And I'm going to do one side really dark and then bring up um, just through the middle so it kind of looks like the stem, the stem is kind of bumpy over there. So I'm gonna do the bump in the middle of this one. So I'm doing both ends. And then my G94. And leaving the last color, we're gonna take a lighter color. Let's see, I have G24. And we'll just fill in the rest with G24. Okay, super cute. Now, um, I wanna bring the green out into the other images, so let's do the greenery. I'm gonna take the G99 and I'm going to start bringing in brown. So I'm gonna do some green and brown leaves. So for the, these, I think I'll do the bottom green and then maybe paint the tops brown. Give it some interest. And then let's make those like little buds of um, some kind of floral or berry or something. Maybe I wanna bring in some red because I am going to be using some red. So I'm gonna do an R39 and then I'll put that on the bottom. And then we'll do a lighter red on the top. So I'm gonna do, um, let's see how R27 looks, if you can see a difference. I think I'll do even lighter, maybe R17. Okay, so for this one I want those to be little red berries too. So I'm gonna take the dark R39 and just dab little dots at the bottom of the berries and then we'll fill it in with this R17. And I'm just dotting it in. Okay, really cute. So now these two, we can do the same Kind of make some of the leaves green and some of the leaves brown. So I'm going to take the G24 and G21. So I'm just going to do some leaves darker green, some leaves lighter green, and some leaves brown. So we have some greenery on this candle as well. So I'm going to do that with the green colors. And also on this cup, we have the same kind of greenery. Oh, and I forgot this one here. So I'm gonna do that one with the little red dot. Okay, I wanna color up the acorns in some brown colors. I'm gonna use E99, E97, and E95. So I'm gonna make my darkest down here at the bottom. And I'm gonna have this top a little bit darker. And the artist drew like little dots, so you could kind of tell where your darkest shadows would be.
to do our 27. Our 17 and our 14. So I'm going to do the little top here like this is some chocolate drizzle or like some maybe it's pumpkin spice drizzle or something. Okay, there are all the images colored and I'm going to cut them out. Okay, there are all the images cut out. And now let's think about how we're gonna place our images on our card. So I could do like a slimline card and do little scenes in each window. Or how about this way? Um, I could do just a cluster of fall goodies with my sentiment, I love fall most of all, and it's just like a story of all fall things that we love. We could do something like that. So let me think about a card base. Okay, I got my Distress Oxide inks out and I'm going to do a blended background. And then we're gonna add all of our images on here. So, I'm gonna take out my blending brushes and we're going to get to work on this background. So I'm gonna start with the browns on the bottom. So I'm assuming this walnut stain is darker than the vintage photo. So I'm gonna start with this one. Let's add my magnets to help me hold down my paper. And I'm just going to blend on the bottom, we're gonna leave enough room for all of these colors. We'll do some splattering with water and splattering with white paint. I love doing that after a, a blended inked background. It looks very cool. So I'm gonna speed it up for you. Okay, so now I have my blended background. I'm gonna take some water and squirt it in my hand and just drop it on to the paper. Wow, I got a really <laughs> big drop there.
And we're going to let that oxide, we'll let that dry and blot that up a little bit with your microfiber towel. And then we're going to splash on some white gouache. So I've just got an acrylic block. I'm going to add some water. And I'm going to put a little bit of this gouache. This is by Windsor Newton. You only need a little dab. And then you're just going to mix it with the water to thin it out. So you'll be able to splatter it. And then you're just going to tap it onto your, your project. Now, typically I like using distress inks better than the oxide. I think um, distress inks have more of a vibrant look. I prefer that better than this um, chalky look. I can show you the difference in another card that I created. Similar, um, the background is similar. And I like the other one way better, but um, I haven't used my oxides, so I decided to take those out and give it another try. Um, but here's a card with the blended background, and you can see the vibrancy of the colors versus the oxides. This is more muted looking. Um, so I'm going to let this dry and then we'll put our card together. Okay, I have my card base all prepared here. Now we're going to add our images. I added some foam tape to some of the images, so some will be popped up and some will be behind. So I'm thinking I want this wood, ch um, wood chip behind the pumpkins and probably this mushroom over here. So let's go ahead and glue down the wood chip first. I was thinking about putting the scarf right here on the pumpkins, but I will um, decide that at the end. So I'm going to um, leave the scarf and mittens off to the side. I'm going to be careful not to press it down too hard in case I want to change some things around because I want this one underneath, tucked underneath here. And then we'll have this candle popped up in front. And I'll have something underneath, so I'm not going to um, press down too hard. So we'll have the candle at the same level as these pumpkins. And we'll tuck in this little envelope. And then we have all these cute little um, elements here to decorate the rest with. So we'll have a little um, maple leaf. Let's put down the sentiment. So I'm just going to put this right in the corner. Okay, well, my card base is kind of drying all flat. I'm going to add some sequins. I'm using the Bumblebee Blue. This calls for confetti um, that was in one of your previous boxes. I'm just using the gold color. I think gold looks very pretty with fall colors. 
and I'm just going to adhere it with my Barely Art glue. I'm going to add some finishing touches with the Nouveau Crystal Glaze and my stickles. I'm going to make the four. Okay, so here is the completed card. I added the gold sequence. I added three little dots of white Jelly Roll pen to some of the images and I added some glitter to the little wheat um, flowers there on the envelope. And I think it turned out really, really super cute. And the sentiment, but I think I love fall most of all. Um, just says it all with all the fall icons here. I hope you guys enjoyed the card and get some inspiration for when you grab your box of the month and create something similar. So thanks so much, guys. Meet me back tomorrow at 1 p.m. Central Time for another peek. Bye, guys.